Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim, a hematologist at Stanley Kim Clinic for Blood Disease and Cancer located in Claremont, California. Today, we'd like to discuss about polycythemia. Polycythemia refers to too many red blood cells in the body. Too many red blood cells make the blood to be thicker and causes circulatory problems. It's like too many cars on freeways causing traffic jam. The main function of red blood cell is to carry oxygen. When our body feels lack of oxygen, our bone marrow produces more red blood cells to compensate. Because the more number of red blood cells, the more oxygen will be carried. However, sometimes our bone marrow makes too many red blood cells for no reason. Then it becomes a, a kind of blood cancer called polycythemia vera. We'd like to discuss more in detail in following slide presentation. Thank you so much for watching. Because red blood cells carry oxygen to the tissues, if red blood cells cannot get enough oxygen from the lung, due to some reasons such as lung disease or sleep apnea, our body makes more red blood cells to compensate, and uh, its condition is called secondary polycythemia. However, if the bone marrow keeps producing uh, red blood cells without any reason, it becomes a cancerous and called polycythemia vera. When dehydrated by like diarrhea, the blood gets relatively uh, more concentrated, falsely raising the red blood cell counts in the blood uh, test. So it's not a true polycythemia, and it's called relative polycythemia. Congenital polycythemia is a very rare uh, occurring in children. What's the mechanism of secondary polycythemia? When body feels lack of oxygen, medically called hypoxia, the kidney senses it and produces erythropoietin, EPO, which is the hormone promoting formation of red blood cells by the bone marrow. Any condition lowering oxygen concentration of the blood increase the erythropoietin. We can see it in chronic lung disease, COPD, emphysema, chronic severe asthma, sleep apnea, cyanotic heart disease, or simply living at high altitude where the oxygen is scarce in the air. In chronic carbon monoxide poisoning, the hemoglobin binds the carbon monoxide forming carboxyhemoglobin. This is pretty uh, 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 tight uh, bonding between oxygen and the hemoglobin. So gradually oxygen loses its uh, place in the red blood cells and the body feels uh, lack of oxygen. We see it in heavy smoking, malfunctioning gas heater or chimney. Interestingly, certain tumors can produce the erythropoietin causing secondary polycythemia. Uh, in hepatocellular carcinoma, uterine fibroid, uh, renal cell carcinoma, hemangioblastoma of the brain, or pheochromocytoma of the adrenal glands. Certain uh, uh, kidney conditions like uh, polycythemia after kidney transplantation and uh, polycythemia after renal artery stenosis are reported. Testosterone increased the uh, erythropoietin level, uh, resulting in polycythemia. Of course, it's secondary. Polycythemia vera is part of the blood cancer group called myeloproliferative neoplasm. It's caused by a mutation in gene uh, called JAK2, resulting in uncontrolled production of red blood cell by the bone marrow. JAK2 stands for Janus Activated Kinase 2. Please look at this picture I draw. In normal situation, the erythropoietin uh, binds the uh, growth factor receptor of the hematopoietic stem cells. And this binding is noticed by the normal JAK2 gene in the cell, uh, which activates the uh, signal transduction. And in the nucleus, the genetic materials will be, uh, uh, like a DNA, will be transcribed uh, leading to cell proliferation. But in polycythemia vera, this mutated JAK2 genes 
can activate the signal transduction leading to cell proliferation without any EPO or other growth factor uh, stimulation. As a result, excessive red blood cell or platelet production occurs. In polycytomy vera, uh, patients can also have high white blood cells and uh, platelets in addition to the uh, high red blood cells. In polycythemia vera, of course we expect a high red blood cell count and the positive JAK2 mutation because it's caused by a mutation in JAK2 genes and the low erythropoietin level in the blood. Because of too many red blood cells, body asks the uh, kidney, hey, we have too many red blood cells, don't make the erythropoietin and we expect the low erythropoietin level in the blood. Some patients have high vitamin B12 level because of high transcobalamin 3, which is the, uh, uh, the, the binding uh, protein of vitamin B12 in the white blood cells. Symptoms and signs are mostly from circulatory impairment. Patients often have headache, dizziness, weakness, uh, buzzing noise of the ear, visual disturbances, chest pain, poor circulation of the leg, red face, and the erythromelalgia, uh, which is interesting symptoms. Patients have redness, pain, swelling of the hand or feet. Itching after warm bath is very characteristic uh, symptoms of polycythemia vera, not seen in other conditions. Occurring in 40% of patients uh, due to high blood cis, uh, histamine level. The histamine also increases the stomach acid secretion and the cause stomach, uh, stomach ulcer and sometimes bleeding. Enlarged spleen or liver are commonly seen. Blood clots in, the, uh, in veins of the legs or artery are uh, causing stroke or a portal vein, hepatic vein, and the basenteric vein thrombosis because of the blood clots in the uh, gut or liver uh, veins. Sometimes patients have a bleeding from the nose, gum, and uh, stomach. Gout is common because of rapid cell turnover where patients have painful arthritis in the feet, ankle, or, uh, or knees. In 2016, WHO introduced a guideline to help the clinicians making diagnosis of polycythemia vera. It has three major criteria and one minor criterion. The first major criterion is high hemoglobin and the hematocrit. Hemoglobin over 16.5 gram per deciliter in men and 16.0 gram in women and the hematocrit over 49% in men and the 48% in women. The second criterion is abnormal bone marrow biopsy showing uh, many, many cells for age in all three white blood cell, red blood cell, and platelet lines, and the uh, mature uh, megakaryocytes, which, is, which are the uh, uh, precursors of platelets. The third one is positive JAK2 mutation. Uh, JAK2 V617F means at amino acid sequence of uh, exon 14, the valine is replaced by uh, phenylalanine. Most, like 97% uh, of patients, have positive JAK2 V61F. And the rest, 3%, uh, have JAK2 exon 12 mutation. So almost all patients of of polycythemia vera has some, uh, some kind of JAK2 mutation. The minor criterion is serum uh, erythropoietin level below normal. For a diagnosis polycythemia, patients must have all three major criteria or the first and second major criteria and the one minor criterion or the first and the third criteria plus one minor criterion. So when the patient has a high hemoglobin and the positive JAK2 and the low EPO, then they don't need to have a bone marrow biopsy uh, for the diagnosis of uh, polycythemia vera. But we still often do that because there are some cases when we feel it's kind of gray, not 100% sure.
When we have a patient with polycythemia, we obtain very thorough history and uh, perform a good physical examination to determine the likely causes. We ask the history of heart disease, lung disease, sleep apnea, smoking, itching after warm bath, dehydration, use of testosterone. We check the size of spleen and liver. We ask the, uh, uh, if they live at high altitude. We also measure the blood erythropoietin level. If it's normal or high, suspect a secondary polycythemia. And if it's low, then we suspect a polycythemia vera. JAK2 mutation is important, but it's not 100% important because uh, other conditions like uh, uh, essential thrombocythemia or primary myelofibrosis, patients can have positive JAK2 mutation. When the JAK2 mutation is negative and the clinically polycythemia is suspected, then we do the uh, bone marrow biopsy. How we treat the patients with polycythemia vera? We categorize those patients into two groups, low risk and high risk. Low risk patients are younger patients aged less than, uh, below 60 years and uh, have no history of blood clots. They simply need to have blood letting to keep the uh, uh, hematocrit less than 40, 45%. The blood letting procedure is called the phlebotomy. High-risk patients who are older, age over 60 years, or history of blood clots require drug therapy. Usually, we use hydroxyurea, which is some kind of a mild form of chemotherapy uh, uh, drugs. When they are pregnant, we can't use the hydroxyurea because of its toxicity to the babies. Then we use the interferon. Sometimes, we also add the uh, phlebotomy. Iron should not be uh, taken by patients because iron uh, helps to make the red blood cells. All patients need to have a low dose aspirin unless the platelet count is very high. Paradoxically, when the patient has too high platelets, it can cause bleeding. Then we should not give aspirin. Itching or painful redness of the hands or feet are usually respond to low dose aspirin once or uh, twice a day. If symptoms are not better with all this treatment or patient have severe itching or big uh, spleen causing pain or the bone marrow has a fibrosis, we use a targeted therapy which is the drug called rul uh, ruloxetinib. Ruloxetinib uh, is inhibitor of the JAK2 genes. The brand name is Jakafi. It helps to relieve the symptoms, but it's not a, a drug for cure. Alkylating uh, chemotherapy drugs such as busulpan uh, is seldom used now because it's risk of uh, uh, acute leukemia. Anagrelide, uh, the brand name is agrelin, is not preferred at the first line therapy because of high incidence of blood clots and uh, occasional uh, major bleeding and the myelofibrosis side effects. The treatment of secondary polycythemia should be focused on the treatment of underlying causes because secondary polycythemia is kind of compensation uh, of the uh, hypoxic conditions. It may be beneficial, however, at certain point, too many red blood cells result in increased blood viscosity, impairing tissue uh, perfusion. Therapeutic phlebotomy is seldom required in secondary polycythemia unless the patient develops obvious symptoms of high uh, uh, red blood cells or hemoglobin goes up very high, like over 20 grams per deciliter. The prognosis of polycythemia vera is not too bad. Poor risk patients with old age, with history of thrombosis and high white blood cell counts have a median survival of 11 years with the treatment. Low risk patients have median survival of 30 years, but be careful, about 3 to 10% of patients can develop acute leukemia within 10 years of diagnosis, then the prognosis become very poor. Thank you for watching.